going live i am live what are you talking about going live i am live well here we go uh this is something that i am going to give a try to uh my former employer monster going fight club live, I am live. What are you talking about going live? gonna have to turn that off because yeah all right well okay what had happened was thank you for joining me certain certainly first of all uh, what had happened was uh, it got to about 10 minutes before I was going to start the stream here and uh, audio just decided, eh, I'm going to give your heart a run for its money and just stop working. <laughs> no clue as to why, no idea why, but I restarted everything multiple times and finally the last time I restarted everything it was like, okay. Your heart rate's up high enough now. I think we'll start. We'll let you calm down. So that's pretty much how that went. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, this is something that um, I decided I was going to give a whirl to. These are cargo containers. Now, if you know anything about Monster Fight Club, they have some awesome scenery. I used to work for Monster Fight Club, and uh, their scenery was always top-notch. I... I I mean, the, the, the way it looks, I still have a lot of it from when I worked for them. And uh, I'm, I'm just like chomping at the bit for, for reasons to basically put it on the table because it looks so good. And uh, I don't work for them any longer, so I'm not being paid to say that or anything like that. But they did send me some of their new cargo containers. And uh, the new cargo containers, these are actually special edition ones. They're gonna, they, they look slightly different than the ones that uh, are going to be coming out that are more generic because these have cyberpunk combat cyberpunk red combat zone uh logos on them from the different uh, companies that are at work within that uh intellectual property within that world uh so this has arisaka zeta uh zarafa militech and continental brands uh, these are all things that are uh, in the uh, universe there, the Cyberpunk Red universe. So that's why these are special editions. These are actually made to go with their uh, tabletop skirmish game called Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone. Uh, but you can use them for any, pretty much anything. So what I thought I'd do is I'd uh, go ahead and just unbox these guys and then show you how they go together. And I'll do my best. Hopefully I don't mess up. It's been a while since I put some of these together. But I have seen them. I have interacted with them before. I've, I've seen a lot of the prototypes as well. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to figure it out. It's not hard. So I don't think I'm going to. Uh, but uh, this is what will come in a set of cargo containers. You're going to get no less than five of them. They're all going to be different colors, uh, different logos. And uh, that's what comes in this uh, special edition. So we're going to go ahead and get uh, to that, first of all. And then I'm going to play around with them and see what I can do. I've got a couple of colors here, and I'm, I've got plenty of other colors over there if I need to go get them. But uh, I'm just going to be dry brushing some metal and some uh, maybe touching up doing some rust on these to try to get them to grunge up a little bit. I've also got some dark tone that I'll go over there and grab. Uh, here in just a few seconds, but uh, to just to make these look like they are used containers, you know, they're as you'll as you'll be able to see, they're going to look pretty pretty brand spanking new, uh, right out of the plastic. But Chad Stilson, eh? <laughs> uh, Matthew Vincent, hello, good to see you guys. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're just going to be painting up, unboxing, putting together, and painting up some of these guys. So the packaging comes like so. You'll have those uh, kind of showing up like this. Let me go ahead, go ahead on over here so that you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, let me see, make sure. Yeah, that's a good shot. That's a good shot. All right, so basically you have, this is what they, they come in. They come in all of these. They come you know, pre-made pre but unassembled. So... You have that come out of the box like so. Let's do the green one first because I like the color green. So this is what the container looks like when you actually pull it out of the container. 
So there you have it. These are the doors. And you also have the tops and the bottoms. A little bit of fuzzy there. And there you have it. So um, these are going to be coming out like that. And then let's see. All right. Can I figure this out? I think I can. <laughs> I think I can. All right. These are the doors. That will be on there. Well, that's pretty easy because that's one of the <laughs> sides of the containers, right? So that'll go on there like that. Um, this will go on here like that. So those just kind of scrunch in there like so. Then we also have is going to pop in on the side just like that um, as you can see these little edges right here are what grab onto inside of here and they just snap right in if I can get it to go again there you go just like that and it holds on then you've got this guy right here that will also snap right in but it also has a roof a roof a roof a roof is on fire so it all pops in just like so then you have the doors that will pop in. You know what? Yep, just like that. And just like that. So that can close and actually be popped in there pretty well. So you can actually open and close this guy like that leave it open uh, so there you have it that's one put together and assembled that might be the bottom let me see yeah it is looks like those are supposed to be the bottom so here we go take that off take that off take that off you can actually leave that together the door and just turn these two guys around and like that so that's the, the top And there we go. There's your green cargo container. Easy peasy, a little lemon squeezy. You can go to Melotech next. What have we got here? Anybody talking in the chat? Nobody's talking in the chat. There's only two people here, uh, actually, that have spoken up in the chat. So uh, I'm going to let you guys rule the chat. Chad and Matthew, man. What's up, guys? How are you doing? I am here uh, putting these things together, and you guys are, are just being quiet. So we're going to go ahead and put these in here like this first again. So there we go. There's that. And then this one will go right in here like that. Bing, bong, boom. And we have the top and bottom like this. So that will go in there. We have the Militech container. So, and this one will go in there like so. Boom, boom. And the top, let's just make sure that it gets all 
Well, I meant to do that. That was planned. <laughs> That's what I get for trying to go too fast, folks. That's what it is. There we go. I'm going to use some elbow grease. That's all. And we're good to go. There's that. This will come on top. Going like that. Going like that. A little bit of elbow grease. Then that guy pops right on here. And this guy pops right on here. There is Militech done with the container doors open boom boom one of the cool things about these is that uh jesse healy says she is here hello jesse healy that is my wife these will actually click together so that you can form stacks of cargo containers like so they will also kind of fit together like this as well so that's a pretty cool thing about these they're modular and they can go together in a lot of different uh, configurations. Uh, I mean, you're talking about blocks, but at the same time, that is one of the cool things about them. And so now we have blue. The blue one is the Zirafa Technical Manufacturing. There you go. So uh, we have those out here. There's the bottom. And did I get it straight up? Yep, sure did. So these go on like that. And like that. The top will go on like so. Nice and snug, like a glove. That pops on the back there, and we'll go ahead and take this and put the doors on. Like so, and like so. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Like so, like so, and then that goes on just like that. Pops open, door can swing open, like so. And let's leave Arasaka for last. Nobody likes Arasaka. They're meanies. All right, here we go. There's the top. And Zibotem. Continental Brands, a treat to eat. Aww. goes right in here like so the top and then the back so again this is just pretty much much of the same not a whole lot else going on except putting these bad boys together I had an interesting day today I was able to get uh, another session of uh, tribes of the wind in had a buddy come over that was that had his morning free and they were able to do that see how that just kind of fits together and doesn't wiggle off generally speaking all right, now here we go with the big dog, Arasaka. I like the graphic on the blue and it looks good. Yeah, Zarafa, that is a cool logo. I do like that a lot. That looks cool. Um, I, I do not know how this is going to look after I get these painted. I think they're going to look fine. I think they're going to look good because I'm just going to really kind of grunge them up a little bit. I'm not really going to do much of anything else as far as that's concerned. I don't want to uh, get rid of any of the logo that is on the outside of the uh, container. So there's that. 
I don't want so I don't want to do a whole lot to this but I do want to make them look a little less pristine I guess is the best word uh, to say want them to you look like they've you know been used in the cities grunged up and I think a little dry brushing of some gunmetal along with some uh, touches of, of uh, rust here and there I think that'll do the trick but uh, these are these are really sturdy products they're they're not uh, flimsy or chintzy or anything like that you know I, I kind of put it kind of put it to the test here a few few seconds ago with uh, trying to smash it together and nothing broke not even the little things that hold these things on so these are good all right so there you have all of the different uh, I guess I'll put this one back here boom <laughs> all right so there we go there's all of the different things now which one should we start with which one should we start with um, I guess maybe we'll go with uh, Hmm. Let's go with the blue one first. We'll go with the blue one first, and uh, we'll see how those look, and we'll go from there in a little bit. But we'll start with the blue one and see how that works. But as you can see, let me go back to uh, uh, angle one here. That's how these fit together, and kind of gives you an idea of how big they are. Um, they're not... Um, they're not incredibly large, but they're also not small. That's my main point that I'm talking about here. They're not so cumbersome as to take up too much room on your, your tabletop. But at the same time, you're also going to be, you know, having a good bit of, uh, uh, he not heft, but a, a good size to use on your board. Your miniatures will be able to go in and amongst these things. Uh, in, a, in a in a pretty real way, They're, they'll fit inside the uh, containers. They'll be able to uh, scale the walls and, and climb up on top and uh, jump down and all that other kind of stuff. All those, you know, gunfight scenes that you've seen in like uh, uh, docks and loading bays and all of that kind of stuff. That's what will bring these things to life. So that's what I like about them a lot. Uh, I thought they were a great product back when I worked with them, and I still do. These are great. But let's go ahead and put those out there. Let's get that one out of the way a little bit to see how we're going to do this here. Um, all right. Well, I guess what we'll just do is we'll start with a um, just some gunmetal. Uh, I'm not really going to do a whole lot as far as that's concerned. Um, but I think gunmetal will be a good place to start and see how it kind of turns out with just a, a basic coating of this so I'll just have to see how it goes I'm gonna put a lot out here because I'm probably gonna be doing multiple multiple uh, containers with it so not really doing a whole lot here pull trying to pull most of the I want to fill the brush up with paint but I also am going to pull most of it out. And then we're just going to pull the rest of it out onto our... Okay, there's a little bit on the top part. And I don't want that to be on there either. There we go. All right, let's see here. So I still have some of that in there. Let me just close these up. And uh, let's see how this is going to look. I don't. Uh, we'll, part, part of painting, and I want to be honest here, part of painting is just trying stuff out. I mean, especially for me, because I'm not a professional at it. Uh, there are a lot of people who are very good at what they do, and painting is like, you should ask them for pointers. This is just kind of, I'm kind of like a layman's painter. Um, I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to try to make it to look the way I want it to look doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the way that you should make it look or the way you should do it. Uh, a lot of 
painting miniatures is, is very kind of hit and miss. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I've just got a little bit of paint on here and I'm going to just kind of bring it back and forth across some of the, uh, the, the areas here so that we can uh, just provide areas where maybe the, the paint has, has rubbed off of the container and it's just kind of the bare metal is coming through. So again, I'll, I'll probably take some time also and uh, provide you with uh, maybe a little bit of a closer up angle so you can maybe see what this is doing. But all I'm doing is I'm pulling the, the brush across the edge of some of these hard, hard surfaces. Um, now, I'm going back and forth this way to catch some of these vertical lines but maybe I also want to come this way and catch some of those horizontal lines as well so that it's providing more of that scoring that uh, we're trying to get that effect pulled off on. But again, this is all kind of, you do this as long as you want for as much as you want to put as much of that, uh, um, that kind of uh, uh, scoring used effect on the edge of that uh, thing. So if you need more paint, I usually try to use up what's ever pulled into the uh, the uh, uh, napkin that I have out here first before I dip back into my wet paint. They do have dry paints for this kind of thing. I don't have any of those dry paints. So I'm just kind of working with what I have. So you have to just kind of go from there. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, well, let's see. I'm going to come around the side here now and just kind of here. I might want to be a little bit more, uh, you know, I don't want the entire thing. It's it. You know, it's still going to have some wear and tear, but at the same time, maybe it isn't as pronounced in some places as it is in others. So we just want to kind of play with it a little bit and go from there. And the cool thing about this is that if you pull over and you get some of this gunmetal on the actual logo, well then, you know, that, that works out. Because the logo isn't going to be pristine, but at the same time, we don't want to cover up that logo either. So all I'm really doing here is providing a little bit of character to an otherwise brand new product. So that it looks like it's been you know, shipped in and carried around and all that other kind of stuff. So let me see. I don't know if you guys can see the difference here. So here's one side that I've kind of dry brushed. Maybe less glare. And then here's the other side. <laughs> Does that help? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> but I'm just really kind of not not really being very uniform with the the strokes that I'm taking because I don't want to uh, provide too much distress but I do want to provide enough to where it kind of looks like there's some change there hopefully that that can be seen start with the gray yeah of course start with the gray babe all right so let me go over here maybe a little bit more Maybe the doors have a little bit more, you know, distress on them because they're used a little bit more. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So now I think we're good. Now, you also have the opportunity to decide, right, am I going to do it on the bottom as well? Or am I going to just realize that the 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 sides and the fronts and all that are, are usually going to be the only ones that are visible so it it's really whatever you want to do 
but again, you know, I'm just kind of, I want to get the corners probably. Those are the things that have been banged into the most maybe, but, um, you know, it just depends on what you see, what your eye sees. That's what you want to try to put on there. I think it would be a little bit more banged up on the edges than on the, uh, but you know, it's just kind of what you think might do. Now, what we're going to try to do later on is uh, we're going to try to add some more dark depth to these. So maybe it's going to be a little bit darker than you would want yours to be. And you can make that choice. But I usually just try to stay as perpendicular to the different angles that are on the uh, on the um, container as I can so again this is just providing the base effect as well so hopefully we'll be able to get a little bit more of the of the uh, shading and all that kind of stuff in there a little bit later all right I need to get more paint I just go back and touch up from from time to time on the other sides as well. Maybe I'm see something that that might you know be a little bit more uh, grungy than the other time. So it's it's really just whatever you want to do. I know I'm not talking very much. Hey, Kabuki's here. You should graffiti tag one. <laughs> I'm not very good at graffiti tagging, Jesse. You know this. Um, I like the graphic on the blue. Yeah, we already started with the Yeah, we already said all that. So now, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm not going to be uh, uh, doing the bottoms of these because, as far as I'm concerned, there the bottoms aren't going to be seen even when they're on top of something else. Let me give you an idea of how these might look. So here's one again. The 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 difference is probably not as visible let me see if i can get a little bit closer see if we can get that to show up a little bit what we got okay let's see let's do that and then see if we can do a little focus a little focus a little bit better that's a little bit better so you kind of get the idea maybe um, how this is coming so the two different uh, sides there uh, this one has not been painted whereas this one has that dry brush on it so now we're just gonna uh, do the same to the top here and and that'll hopefully bring it together a little bit But I think on this, I'm just going to not really go on perpendicular. It's more of a, a diagonal sweep across this. So I'm not just catching all of the, you know, all of the little ridges here. If I went straight across, I would get kind of more of an even uh, catch on all of these um, vertical lines or horizontal lines, however you want to look at it. But by going at it kind of at a diagonal, I'm catching some of them, but not all of them. So 
And really, I can't say this enough, this really comes down to how you want it to look. It's not a right or a wrong way or anything like that, but you just want to make it look the way that you want it to look. And, you know, the grungier it can be, the better, in my opinion, because, you know, these shipping containers just get the crap beat out of them. More often than not, I would imagine, at least. So... There's there's one that has kind of a you know maybe the center line here is a little bit more just kind of like that not a huge difference just yet but again this is just step one in the process so I think. Uh, what I'll probably do is just give you guys the ideas um, that I'm using with these, and uh, I'll try to do a couple of them, but uh, then come back in another video and just kind of show you the finished product with some miniatures and that kind of thing and go from there. But kind of kind of think you get the idea. Maybe I should... Oh, that's an idea. <laughs> I will put together the other blue one. And maybe you'll be able to see the difference. Did I ever play with, I see it on the blue one, looks good. All right, cool. Don't bother with the bottom. That's right. I'm not gonna. <laughs> uh, did you ever play with paint or paint, play with or paint model trains? Uh, the answer to that question is no, ma'am. I mean, I, I always saw them and I was always intrigued by them, but... Um, I never really got into them. It was a pretty expensive hobby uh, back in the day. And, it, well, it was not as expensive back in the day as it is now. But um, so to answer your question, I did not uh, fully get into it, nor am I have I ever got into it as, a, as an adult. But I will say this, it has always amazed me to see the little dioramas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and how they how they uh, look and how they interact with each other and, and the ingenuity that people have to just make them more and more interactive. It's always been one of those things that's just really made me you know stop and look at it and just really understand. So here's the two together. All right. So you get the idea how this one looks more distressed than this one does. This one looks like it just came off of the production line. This one looks like it's been in use for a couple of years at least. So you get the idea. Matthew Rose is here. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, just noticed your watch band. Yeah. Uh, that is my Rebel watch band. That's correct. And I uh, um, got it from uh, MOBA. I know, is it MOBA? Something like that. MOBA. You know, the, fo the one that has a fox symbol on it. Anyway. They're pretty nice. Um, so you get the idea, right? Uh, we're not looking for a huge change. We're just looking to make it look used. All right, so let's go ahead and try it. You know, the blue was a little bit of a dark color. So let's try it on, let's say the, hmm. Let's try it on a really dark color so that, that maybe that, that, um, that uh, silver will just pop a little bit more here on the Arasaka one. But maybe, I don't know, we'll see. All right, I'm not gonna do a whole lot of these, just a few of them so that you kind of get the idea of what we're doing, and then we'll move on to the next step in the process. So we'll start here with um, the door, as we did last time. And again, this is, you want it to be kind of light. You don't want it to be too much. And you don't want it to be all over. You're not painting the entire face of the uh, of the of of the door, you're just wanting to touch the highest recesses and leave those other recesses there. The highest recesses that doesn't even make sense. Um, you want to touch the highest surfaces and leave the recesses there so that there's some differentiation. There's there's some depth to the model now. So maybe that helps a little bit. Maybe you can see that a little bit. It makes the light kind of pop off of it a little bit more too so you get the idea right 
So that's all we're really doing. We're not doing a whole lot more than that. I'm doing a little bit more on the doors because I figure those are gonna be the ones, the, the parts of the model that's used a little bit more. Now doing this on a black is gonna give the whole thing kind of a gunmetal look. And that's kind of cool. I like that. But at the same time, maybe it's not what we really want. We just, we're just trying to provide places where the, the paint, the black paint has been rubbed off. So here I'm going to take kind of a, you know, kind of just change the, the stroke direction a few times here and there so that you're uh, not striking the model at the same angle all the time just so that you provide some differentiation in how the wear on the side of the container could have happened. So, you know, I did some strokes like this, I did some like this, I did some that were straight. It's, it's, it's really whatever you wanna do, but I, I tend to focus on more of the edges and then wherever the brush takes the paint, the, the paint in between that, it, it's up to you and up to uh, your hand and all that kind of stuff. Maybe there's a little bit of extra right in here because I don't know, whatever. But just kind of make it grungy a little bit. You see where it's... And the cool thing about having a, a logo that's printed on there is that the, the gunmetal that you're putting on will go over top of that so it's actually providing like almost like a natural weathering to it and that's what i really like about this idea this that i had so but again maybe you want it to look different so we'll see but there's that and we'll come around here to this edge now and kind of employing the same idea just a couple of different strokes here and there to maybe then now come back and fill in some of the edges where you think there might be more distress it's really just whatever you think looks the best so I'm putting more of a focus on the edges than maybe you would that's fine some wild strokes in there I think this one might be a little bit older than the blue one <laughs> but you know it is what it is the cool thing about this is that the product is is so decently made that it really kind of makes it easy you don't really have to try that hard to get a, a pretty decent effect out of it. As long as you are random enough with your strokes and you're light enough with your strokes because you want to make sure that there isn't a whole lot of paint in the brush. Um, but if you're light enough with your strokes and you're making sure that you don't have a whole lot of paint in there, you can kind of work at it to where you want more paint here and a little bit more here and less over here just by staying away from those less places and providing a little bit more oomph with your brush on those other spaces that you want more wear to happen. So that kind of gives you the idea there. And then here on the top, we're gonna do the same thing that we've done and kind of take a couple of different directions at it, um, just so that we don't hit all of those spots. but it does provide some differentiation there. So again, maybe a little bit more focus on the edges like, like I'm trying to do because you know, those forklift operators aren't always in the best of condition. So you kind of get the idea, right? So now, Let's go ahead and take and just show you the difference. So we'll put another one in. 
everything wasn't shiny new. Uh, speaking of Star Wars, that is one of the things that always helped sell the world. It looked lived in and stuff looked used and worn. That is absolutely correct, Kabuki. Um, Kabuki, I believe that you and I would get along and agree with a great many things because you say a lot of stuff that's correct. Even the stuff that's opinionated is correct. You also have a whole lot of factual <laughs> factual information that I can't refute, so I would have to agree with you on that stuff. But even your opinions, a lot of your opinions are, are spot on. In my book, at least. That's one of the things that I think drew me to Star Wars so much, was the fact that you know it wasn't that pristine look that that uh, everybody always wanted star, you know, uh, sci science fiction movies to have. Just didn't buy it. All right, there we go. And there we go there. All right, so as you can see, one is distressed, one is not. Not a huge difference but hopefully the difference is there. Hopefully you can see it, um, and I think you can, um, but uh, that is that. So, um, okay, I think what we're gonna have to do here, all right, here's, here's a little bit of a, a spoiler. And I'm going to go back to angle one here for a second. Uh, I'd say it's a huge difference. All right, well, cool. Um, I, I like the difference. I'll put it that way. Just looking at it here, this looks like it would be something that would be in, in the cyberpunk universe. This, however, does not, unless it just comes right off of the, uh, uh, of the assembly line. You know, these two things, there is enough of a difference there to where this is now more thematic than this is. So this is good, <laughs> not saying that at all, but this is more thematic. This is looks like it fits within the universe that you're trying to, to, to build up. Um, I should probably get some of my terrain, some of my, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to, but uh, we'll do that in just a minute. Um, so you kind of get the idea, right? Um, this isn't difficult, this isn't rocket science, but it is something that you can do easily with one brush, one little thing of gray, of, of silver paint, and now you have a what looks like a metal shipping container, not a plastic shipping container. That's what we're shooting for, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the blue one now and we're going to go over, we've kind of provided the basis for how we want this to look. Now we're going to take some darker um, shade and we're going to add some more darkness to this. So let me just let you uh, look at these for a second while I go get that. And I'll be right back. So I'm going to get some strong tone which is basically a wash. And the strong tone is basically gonna give us a, uh, enough of a shadow effect to where on some of these guys here, you know, you can, you can it's gonna settle into some of these corners and provide more depth. To the model than what is already there. Now, the molds of the plastic on this model is what's really going to bring this out. Uh, and because the molds are so uh, defined, um, there's going to be a lot of places for that ink, for that wash to settle. And then when it dries, it just looks like grime. It looks like, you know, grime. <laughs> Sorry, I can't come up with the words. But what it's also going to do, unfortunately, is it's going to mute some of that um, silver that we just got through putting on there. So 
there's a couple of ways that you can deal with washes. You can just kind of lather it on and um, let the chips fall where they may, or you can be a little bit more definitive about where you want the wash to be, and then make sure that you're using the uh, brushes uh, uh, correctly accordingly. So what we're gonna do here, first of all, that brush I was using, I'm gonna go ahead and wash it out and let it sit in the water for a little bit so that we can get all of that stuff out of there. Um, and while that's kind of sitting in there, doing its thing, we will take one of the other brushes here. I think we're going to use this one. It's a um, Army Painter Wargamer Monster. I don't know what that actually means, but it uh, looks like it is a... Uh, it's a product code BR7008, and I don't know what that means, but usually there's like a size. This doesn't have a size. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this, and we're going to try to define some of those places that we think some of that grime would have settled, all right? And so we're just going to take a little bit of this strong tone, going to give it a shake so that uh, it's nice and mixed up. And... I'm going to be a little bit liberal with it, putting it into the dish here so that I have enough to work with. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to choose. We'll start on the on the door and we'll kind of choose where we want everything to go. So maybe there's more grime around these areas here where the hinges would have been, you know, kind of in there. So now. With dry brushing, what we were doing earlier, you want to get some of the, most of that paint out of the brush. With this, you don't. You just want it in there, and then you're going to work with what you have in the brush. So here, maybe there's uh, some spots up here. So we put some darker places up in there, like so. So again, you're being a little picky about where you want this stuff to be. Maybe there's a little bit more in, uh, you know, corners and stuff like that. So you can kind of just play with it and let it go where you want it to go a little bit. But then there's also a little bit of, um, you know, maybe there's a lot of extra on the edges here. Again, we're just kind of playing with it right now to see how it works out. But this is where we're just kind of providing a little bit more character to the, or maybe you want some of that in there. But again, we're just providing some character to this piece. So we're not really doing a whole lot, but we're adding a little bit of dirt and grime that is basically what this wash is going to be doing. All right. So not a whole lot of uh, real detail work that's going on here. It's just you pick where you want it to be and where you don't want it to be and you go from there. So not a whole lot going on there. Just some dirt and grime, as you can see. All right, now on the sides, maybe this has been some spots where there's been some pretty significant grime down here on the bottoms. So maybe down here on the bottom of it, there's a little bit more grime and stuff. It's been sitting in something somewhere or what have you. You know, maybe you'd be a little bit more liberal around the edges. And again, you got to do this the way you want it to look. Don't necessarily worry about anything else. All right, so maybe we turn it upside down like this and we do the same thing on this side just to provide that kind of 
that kind of uh, edged effect where dirt and grime is going to settle in the edges of this, you know, and um, maybe you kind of spread it out a little bit here and there. But again, what we're trying to do is just provide this little thing with some character. That's all. dirty it up a little bit so a little bit here and there get the idea now that looks pretty uh, weird so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to not put any more in and I'm just going to take and pull some of that stuff down so that we get some of that distress to to fall into so that it's, it, you know, you still have it in the actual corners, but you're pulling some of it off of that, those flat surfaces, so that it's not as defined of a, you know, a square. It looked like it was a square there for a little bit, and I didn't really like that. And I'm still kind of, I might have screwed that up, but we'll see. We'll see. But now we can just pull down part of that so that some of that distress goes down into the the rest of the uh, model so again we're just trying to work with the lines that are there don't try to make new ones right now because you are wanting this to be a little bit more natural than the scuff marks that you were putting on there with the silver I think that looks all right now. Just a little dirt and grime. Let's see here. What do we got? Same with the alien world. Um, everything wasn't. Now it all needs is graffiti all over it. Yep, that's true. Well, I'm not the hand of graffiti. I'll have to have somebody else do that. Uh, same with the alien world looks lived in. Yep, I'd say it's a huge difference. Cool. Thank you. Uh, looks cool for sure. Yeah, when I think of Cyberpunk, I think more towards Blade Runner. Yes, that's absolutely true. Uh, we got a full black screen. Oh, no. All right, let's see what happened here. Let's go back to this. There we go. Uh, let's see, did that work? There we go. I don't know what happens. Laser focus on the cargo containers. Yes, I know. Screen is black, Sam. I know, I know. All right, here we go. Let's see. Put that back. All right. So, all right. So there we have that. Now let's go ahead and get on the back here and get some more. And we will get up in this top corner here, of course. So, kind of see, just, oh, not that, that's the wrong side. Just carrying that look there. Carrying that look there over to the back side as well. So we're trying to keep it looking as uniform as possible, but, you know, you'll have to maybe look for it a little bit. And if you want a little bit more dirt and grime on some of this logo or what have you, feel free. Feel free. A little dirt and grime on that thing. Yeah, looks pretty dirty. And that's pretty good too. And again, if you want more grime, by all means, 
You can put as much grime in there as you want. But uh, first pass, I usually try to take a little bit of a easier hand with it and kind of just go from there. You know, you can always come back and add more, but it's harder to, to, to take away what's been laid down already. So, but I do go kind of heavy on the edges here and then, you know, pull down as you go. And when, when you pull into those, those corners, it's better to kind of let, let the uh, brush leave those pools behind because that's what really kind of looks like those uh, pockets of dirt and grime and nastiness. So now I'm just going to, again, pull down some of that stuff that I put in there so it doesn't look like just a line of dirt kind of blends in a little bit. And then same thing on the other side, just pulling it down. Follow the lines that are uh, of the container that are already there. And that should do pretty good. If you want to make that, again, just like the other logo on the other side, make that look a little grimier, then by all means do so. Like so, kind of get the idea, right? I think it looks pretty good. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Uh, let's see. I think I want to come back and do this one a little bit more. And over here, and then pull down. I just think that the, the edges would be a little bit more dirty. A little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Alrighty. Uh, Alright, now on top. Um, on top, I'm wondering. I think I want to do pretty heavy around the edges and along each of these so that we can show that, you know, it's kind of dirtier inside those things than on the outside. Because that's where all the dirt and grime is settled and all that kind of stuff. So, kind of. We can move it around it. And one of the cool things about washes is that uh, they can still be moved. They take a while to dry and they can still be moved around um, even while they, even after they've been applied. But I'm also going to uh, add a little bit more around here on these edges so that they are sufficiently grimed up in my opinion. And if you see anything that looks a little weird, just play with it a little bit and see what happens. You know, this is kind of a learning process. It's not really academic. <laughs> see what I did there? So more grime down in the middle, maybe wash some of that, you know, wipe some of that grime off of the edges because they wouldn't be as dirty or grimy, but you get the idea, I think. So there you have it. That is one step of the process. And again, you can, you can make it as dirty as you want or not as dirty as you want. Here are, here are the two together uh, once again so that you can kind of see the difference. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Give me that grime, Sam. Don't be stingy. <laughs> that's awesome. The blue one looks sicker because the grime can stand out from the black one. Yes, that's true. We're probably not going to use a whole lot of grime on the black one because uh, for that very reason, you're not going to have a whole lot of differentiation. What you may want to do on the, on the black one and what I'm probably going to do is use a little bit more of the rust uh, to make it uh, to make its age stand out a little bit more, but you get you get the idea. This is the straight out of the plastic 
and this is the one that has both the gunmetal and the shade applied to it. So you kind of get the difference, right? Um, what uh, you could do at this point, and what I think I will do, just to kind of show um, what I'm talking about, is that you can now go back to this one maybe with uh, a smaller brush. Yeah, let me do that. And just kind of touch some of the parts that you think might have more shine to it than something else. Like right here, uh, maybe this buckle here has a little bit more shine to it. Maybe this thing right here has a little bit more, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, and maybe, and not all of it, just part of it. Just so that, you know, those things have had a little bit more wear to them than something else. You know? So, and this can be just kind of a touchy, touch and go. You, you put it where you want it, but not anywhere else. To so where some edges on that thing just kind of pop more than the others. And... If we use, you know, a, a smaller brush, then we can maybe be a little bit more uh, re refined as to what edges get those highlights and whatnot. So, you know, maybe a couple of them do up here and over here and, you know, that kind of stuff. Not a whole lot needs to be happening here. You're just really providing highlights more than anything, a little bit, a little bit more scuffs here and there, um, but doesn't have to be a whole lot, just a little bit here and there, and it provides it with a lot of uh, character. So there's a little bit of a difference over here on the side. You know what I would probably do is just try to stick to some of these edges and just you know pull down around them so that there's more distress on some of those edges than on others um maybe do a couple of them down here too because some of that some of that paint has and that logo has actually worn off because of all those years of use and all that kind of stuff so it, it's really just kind of up to you what you want to do. But I would stay with the, the natural flow of the lines rather than try to make anything, you know, reinvent the wheel or anything like that. So you kind of get the idea, right? Um, over here, we'll come back and do the same thing. Um, but maybe here we want to... Uh, We have a, a corner over here that's really kind of beaten up and just a couple things here and there, not a whole lot. And really just kind of use your eye to see where you want those uh, more shiny places to kind of pop out and where they, they might not be. See this one, we got a lot of uh, we got a lot of silver on it earlier, so maybe I don't want to put too much more on it. But maybe there's a spot here and there, you know. You know, just a little bit here and there, maybe on the corners down here, a little bit more. But this is kind of brightening back up some of those spots that maybe you made. Maybe you think you made it a little bit too dark. Maybe it's maybe you think it's going to be a little shinier. You know, it's whatever you want to do, really. And now, you know, just maybe a little bit here, a little bit there.
just follow the lines that you've that are already on the model you don't have to like I said you don't have to reinvent the wheel but you're just providing distress so there you have it there's the two I would call this one pretty much done for for my tastes and for what I like maybe maybe I would go back and add some some rust to it here and there but this kind of thing is I would call it done because I'm also one of those kinds of people that uh, if if I can sit back and look at it at arm's length and it looks cool I'm good I don't have to like hold it up to my face and try to get all up in it and all that other kind of stuff um, let's see here seriously it would be awesome to put graffiti on it yes I know Matthew I am simply not <laughs> and I mean not good at doing graffiti type stuff so maybe I'll play with it but I'm definitely not going to try it right now because I would really have to put some some thought and some research into doing it and, and where I would put it and all of that other kind of stuff maybe Sam was here yeah or Kilroy was here or something like that that's what I would that's what I would probably do something like that but you get the idea right so this is the, the this is how it came out of the box and and this is how we've we've made it to look now that it is you know sufficiently grimed up and uh, has a little bit of uh, more character to it so that it looks like it's been used so you have the idea that w what's going on here now what we're going to do here is we're going to try to uh thank you kabuki appreciate that now we're going to see about putting some uh some rust color on this one so this is the arisaka one that we've already put the uh distressing gray gunmetal gray to or gunmetal uh, silver uh, to it and this is how it came out of the box so that's what we are at right now and so now we're going to see about possibly putting some rust on this and seeing how it works this is the first time i have ever tried applying a rust look to anything <laughs> so uh this is going to be a learning process uh first we got to give this a shake though that's for sure kilroy batty was here <laughs> Got a thumbs up from Matthew. Thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit. I gotta get some protein. I apologize, um, but it's it's coming open. It's coming open. Um, but uh, these are awesome, by the way. Uh, Core Power High Protein Milkshakes. Uh, basically, these things. If you have to get protein in, and you don't want to, uh, um, you know have to be eating all the time these basically taste like frosties oh. which is a good thing um, <clears throat> so that is that all right um, bum, 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 bum. and I don't know See, this is a Army Painter War Paints effect, and I'm not not really used to using effects a lot. So <clears throat> I'm usually just, you know, paint it the color that I want it to be, throw some shade on it, and you're good to go. Now, I have used their speed paints before, and those are amazing to use. Um, those are really fun. I'm looking forward to getting back to using those things. Um, but let's see. I have no idea how this is going to go. All right. We're about to find out, folks. Now, what I think I will do is I think I will, on this one, do the same thing and kind of brighten up some of those places that we... Hmm that we were, um, that are kind of dark, you know, provide some parts where the, you know, the, the metal might be shinier here and there. I am gonna do that because I think I'll use those spots 
as, or at least some of those spots as the spots that have some of that rust on it. So maybe it stands out a little bit more. But all I'm really doing here is, is uh, running along the edges of some of these um, parts so that it's pop, making them pop a little bit more. So I've, I've basically done these two things already. Let me go ahead and go down to the second, second angle here. That will be easier. Um, so as you can see, I'm just kind of going along with these little different, uh, these lines here, providing a little bit more, you know, wear and tear maybe to these different parts so that um, they're a little bit more differentiated than the rest of the model. So this is another way, you know, highlighting is just another way that you can make those darker parts of the model uh, seem a little bit more pronounced. But I think what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to get those. And I'm not getting all of the things in there. I still want to leave some of that darkness there so that um, so that there is that uh, depth there. But I do want to get some of those because I want some places to put some of this rust color and see how it looks. But I think you get the idea. So we've got those in there now. Maybe, you know, maybe on the edges here, there's there's a little bit more. There's a little bit more silver because of wear and tear and all of that stuff. So again, it's just kind of how you think it might look, but there's a little bit of a difference, yeah. Um, and down here, let's see here. I think for this, I think I'm gonna stick more to the edges. And again, I'm not being very scientific here. I'm just putting it where I think it might look. And if something, you know, if the paint's still wet, wipe it off. You are the master. All right. Here, let's see. I don't know how to hold it. <laughs> uh, well, there we go. We got a lot on the bottom here. It doesn't really matter that it's on the bottom, but I don't want it to be sloppy either. Okay, here, here. That one already has a good bit on it, so I think we'll use that mostly the way that is. That's pretty good. And over here, maybe. Ooh. See how I just kind of wiped that with my finger and it smoothed it out a little bit? You know, that's something you can use. Just to make it look a little bit more, a little bit more natural. That's all. And up here up top, maybe a couple of these have a little bit more on different areas. All right. Not bad. I think that's pretty much done. Yeah, that's pretty much done. All right, so. Now to use, can you feel that I've been stalling? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Is there a soap you wash up with that is best for getting paint off your hands or is any soap fine? I've usually found that with most of these, they are, um, with most of these paints, they're water-based. So a lot of those paints will get out. Um, 
you know, they'll they'll thin up really well in water. Uh, almost any soap. Um, uh, Dawn, I think, is pretty good with it. But I've I've never run into a soap that that does a better job than others. I've just not paid attention. Um, but uh, I, I've I've also never really you know as soon as I'm done painting I go wash my hands, and usually by that time I can I can I can usually get most of it off if I do a little bit of scrubbing. Um, but I've never really used um, any kind of paint uh, that that stayed more than others. Now some of the primers um, that are enamel and uh, those yeah you can it'll take some time to get that off but but the the model paints are usually uh, more water-based than anything else and they come right off with just a little bit of scrubbing all right gonna go back down here to the top I guess non painters could just go outside and rub some dirt on it <laughs> that is true all right let's see what I can do with this rust I have no idea how this is gonna look people this does not look like it's going to look like rust, but um, uh, who, what, who am I? Yeah, this doesn't look like rust at all. <laughs> well, I guess maybe, but oh my goodness. I'm just going to pockmark it, and hopefully it looks a little rusty, but... Uh, it just looks orange. It doesn't look like rust. I mean, maybe? I don't know. I don't know, people. I'm just kind of playing with this. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But, you know, maybe this is like a rust riddled thing. I'll tell you that much. I don't like it. I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't like it. Can you tell? I don't know if you can tell. Turn this back on. I'm still going to try it. I'm still going to try it. I'm not going to give up. I'm not really, not really done with it yet. But I just don't know how this is going to be. I think it'll be all right. Don't get me wrong. Let's see, would be hard to see on camera. Yeah, me too. Hard to see. It's hard to see in person. <laughs> um, and I don't want to make it to where it's easy to see on camera because that might be too much. But we'll see. We'll, we'll try it. Maybe if I had a PhD in, in uh, how rust actually works, it would look better and I could put it on certain parts of it and not others because that's how rust grows. But I'm not, alas. Put some on a corner here. Not all the way though. Put some on the corner down here. This is just like, I don't, know, I don't know, what do you think? Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it well. How does that look? I usually do rust dry brushing. Yeah, and I guess that's what this is kind of turning out to be. But I don't know, what do you think? 
It's not, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not like I thought it was going to be. This is, this is starting to look rusty. I will say that. As it dries. You know what I mean? So, that may be, that's maybe not too bad. It looks fine. Yeah. I think so. But uh, yeah, let's, let's continue over to the side here. So I think this is going to be pretty much a, uh, a pretty, like, you know, you, you just touch here and there and give it that idea of, of having, you know, a little bit more rust on the corners and whatnot. Maybe it's grown a little bit more down the side. but then not all of it. We'll see. I know I, I wish I had a better angle for you. This is not the best. Part, part parts of the parts of the model it might be a little bit more grayish or what have you then you know we'll put a little bit more on there but where the where the silver kind of popped through this is a lot more of a it's probably not doesn't come through on on screen a whole lot better than it probably should for me to do this but you get the idea I guess I'm just kind of playing right now seeing how it works but it's starting to look a little bit more rusty what do you think I think I think that's all right actually I think I'll leave that side alone and come out here with this one now and again we're just kind of touching some of those corners really more than anything to where that would kind of that rust would maybe be prevalent I don't know Just kind of touching on it somewhere you know every once in a while yeah, that's not bad I don't think so. I don't think that's too bad. It's coming along pretty good, I think, actually, right? I don't know. I, don't, I just, I don't know. It just looks like brown. <laughs> it doesn't look like rust. To me, at least. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I'm starting to see it over here now. But it's hard for you guys to see it, I bet you. On that, on that one right there, that looks like it's rust. It's starting, especially down there. Yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it, but I don't know. We'll see. All right. Almost done. Then we'll be done with the stream here. But I just want to get a little bit more of this stuff on there so that it, it uh, works out right. Maybe try to match the uh, stroke direction when you're adding this so that it looks like some of those strokes that you put in of the, uh, of the uh, 
silver earlier is just where that kind of came through. That'll do it. It's not too shabby. Might be a little bit too much rust, but let's just put a little bit, a couple of things here. And now maybe this is working, maybe it isn't. I don't know. in a little bit. I think she's about done. That one's about done. So... Yeah, that's not too bad. Screen is flashing back every once in a while, Sam. You might want to go back and watch towards the end. Yeah, I will. You can easily tell that the rust is what you were going for. Cool. All right. Super duper. Well, here's the here's the difference between the two. Here's the, the, the right out of the box plastic. And this is after a coat of... Um, gunmetal and then we also put some well we just did a couple of coats of gunmetal and then we also put on there some uh, rust so those are the two things we did there and then we also have I, I know I think I know what the uh, screen flashing back and forth is I think one of my HDI HDMI cables going back to my uh, camera two is what's uh, giving us trouble. So I apologize for that. But this is what we have done. We've taken this guy right here, and uh, which is just the black plastic, and we've uh, dry brushed some gunmetal onto it and then touched up and highlighted some areas with the dry rust. Uh, and that's what we came up with uh, on that one. So there you have that. And then these guys over here, this is what we started with, uh, the plastic blue. And we used some, let me see, let's do, let's do it this way. Uh, we used some, uh, again, gunmetal. And then we also used some strong tone. Then we came back with some uh, gunmetal as well to touch up some of those places and give it a little bit more of a spark here and there. You could actually take the uh, dry rust and give it the same treatment uh, to kind of have it more of this rusty look to it. But those are the two containers that we have done today. So I hope that this has been enjoyable and uh, that you have enjoyed it sure blame the hardware i i always do this is what one should do you always blame the hardware it's never my fault i'm perfect <laughs> nope not even close but i was noticing a couple days ago that it did the same thing it just gave me a black screen and it was while i was setting up played around with the wire a little bit um, so it's either the wire, the cord, or it's one of the connectors. So hopefully it's the cord because the connectors are significantly more uh, difficult to replace. Uh, but that has been that. Uh, so you can basically pick up um, these special editions. I think you can pick them up right now on their website. You can... Uh, I believe I put the uh, website um, link down in the description of the video. 
So you can follow that and go check out all of the rest of the stuff that they have. They have some great stuff. Um, Ostrify Club is a great company and they have great products, um, especially with their new um, um, Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone game that has come out. Uh, and they are also coming out with a Borderlands, Mr. Torg's Arena of Badassery uh, game that is super fun as well. But their scenery is amazing scenery. So uh, this is uh, the uh, special edition cargo containers that go with Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone. Thanks for joining me. I certainly appreciate your time. Uh, and we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. Matthew, thank you. Fun stream. Thanks, Sam. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bart is here. Thanks, Sam. Makes me want to paint. Good. I hope so, because that's uh, part of the reason why I like showing painting, because a lot of people think that, that painting is, is super difficult to do, and I know that it's not for everybody, but the effect that you can have with just a little bit of time and a little bit of practice, a little bit of patience, it's, it's worth it. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.